Oh, good evening. I'm so excited um, to be here. I'm Bryn Thompson, and um, so thankful to have Katie here doing this with me. Um, I actually grew up here in Park Cities and um, was dedicated as a baby here, was baptized here, um, did a stint in the singles ministry here, got married here, um, and now have three kids in the kids ministry. So I have a heart for this church and... Um, Oh, y'all, Megan is awesome. And so when she asked Katie and I to do it, uh, I, um, whew, that's big shoes, Phil. She said she's just a nine and a half, but I, um, <laughs> my shoes are bigger than that. It's okay. Um, anyway, so just so thankful to be with y'all tonight. And for those that this might be your first woven, welcome. We're so glad you came. Um, and for those that have been with us before, thank you for coming back. And um, just, we have a great story tonight to dive into. Um, you know, this fall has been such a sweet time for me and for our thread group too of just studying these women. We studied the Samaritan woman and the Shunammite woman and the bleeding woman and all such powerful stories. And the story that we're going to study tonight about Mary is no different. It's, it's awesome. And um, one that you might be familiar with, but I pray that the Lord opens your eyes to something different tonight. And, um, you know, the other women that we studied didn't necessarily, they weren't named in these stories, even though God knew their name. Um, so our story tonight is different because we have her name and she's very well known. However, her name is not mentioned in every gospel, which is interesting fact I just learned. Um, in Matthew, she's mentioned and the story is briefly mentioned. It's actually more from the story or from the perspective of Joseph um, and how the angel comes to Joseph. Mark, the story is not mentioned at all. And in John, he kind of poetically alludes to this story, talking about how in the beginning was the word, and the, you know, the word was God, and the word became flesh, and that whole passage. And he doesn't even name Mary later on in the gospel. He calls her mother of Jesus. Um, but then Luke, that's where we're going to be tonight, Luke 1. Oh, Luke, he is a doctor, so he has some great attention to detail, which I thoroughly appreciate. Um, and he has the most comprehensive gospel, and he even says at the beginning of his letter that, um, that he carefully investigated all of these accounts from the beginning, and I have decided to write a careful summary for you to reassure you of the truth of all you were taught. Um, so we know that this is true and this happened, and um, we are thankful for this story that we're going to dive into. So Mary is our woman, and I wouldn't even call her a woman because in this time, she was probably 13 years old, which is crazy to think about when I think of my 13-year-old self and if an angel came to me and spoke to me, whoa, anyway, um, but with girls at that time were 12, 13, 14 when they were married for many different reasons culturally, but one of the main reasons was to ensure her virginity, which is essential to the story, right? That to fulfill prophecy. And um, not only was she young, she was poor and she was from a town that wasn't important in the eyes of the Jews. And all these things that were about her that the world would have said that she was unworthy of this job and that she was not suitable for this job. But God chose her, and he chose her to fulfill his prophecy, to complete the plan from the beginning that he had from the very beginning. And he, he I just keep coming back to he, he picked her, and her, but also her obedience and her submission that we're gonna read about led to our salvation. And that is just so wonderful. So we're going to dive in to Luke 1, verse 26 through 56. And I'm going to pray before we start reading. Lord, just thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for um, your heart for us, Lord, that you loved us so much that you sent your son to be born in a manger and to live a life here on earth and to then ultimately die on the cross. And Father, we just thank you. Um, that your Holy Spirit is in our midst tonight. Open our eyes and our ears to what we need to see and what we need to learn and take away from this story. Father God, we thank you for these women in this room. We thank you um, 
for just their time tonight, Lord. And we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and um, but please follow along in whatever translation you have. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her, for God has decided to bless you. You will become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can I have a baby? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she's already in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant, and I am willing to accept whatever he wants. May everything you have said come true. And then the angel left. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, You are blessed by God above all other women, and your child is blessed. What an honor this is that the mother of my Lord should visit me. When you came in and greeted me, my baby jumped for joy the instant I heard your voice. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Mary responded, oh, how I praise the Lord, how I rejoice in God my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl and now generation after generation will call me blessed. For he, the mighty one, is holy and he has done great things for me. His mercy goes on from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm does tremendous things. How he scatters the proud and haughty ones. He has taken princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has satisfied the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. And how he has helped his servant Israel. He has not forgotten his promise to be merciful. For he promised our ancestors, Abraham and his children, to be merciful to them forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. Y'all, I don't know. I grew up hearing this story, but there's something about thinking of this girl. 